Okay, and, and I mean, just talking about insure tech and you know some of those startups. What were some of the most exciting projects that that you saw? Well, very interestingly, uh, Michael, I found that the different continents between Europe and the UK and the US had a very different focus on what those insure tech startups uh, were doing. Um, I found that in Europe and in uh, the UK, they had moved beyond just trying to attack um, various parts of the insurance value chain. And that was the kind of pilots and POCs that the corporates were engaging with with the startups. While in my time in the US, the kind of projects that the corporates were interested in doing with the startups focused more around attacking a specific problem in their value chain. Now, that doesn't mean that there weren't startups that wanted to do something new, that wanted to create a what they would call a full stack product right from the beginning to the end where they provided all the services and they in, in effect really acted as an insurer. But of course the corporates weren't really interested in working with them because they would see them as direct competitors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, you know, that, that's one of the interesting things with these startups is that the corporates want to support them because you know, it's seen as socially responsible, you know, helping upcoming entrepreneurs. Um, and you also, if there is gonna be a new technology that cannibalizes the industry, you wanna make sure that you've got a foot in the door. But on the other hand, you also you don't want to fuel the fire that is going to destroy the empire that you've built. So I kind of find you know, it's an interesting relationships that the big corporates have with the, the smaller entrepreneurs. And that's why I guess, you know, like you said, it makes sense for them to say to them, hey, rather focus on just one area of the value chain and see if you can perfect that. I mean, there's that company called Lemonade where their whole thing is that the claim process is that it's recorded. And the idea being that people are less likely to lie or they say that their technology can identify if somebody is, is lying in the, the claims process. And this is targeted just to try and reduce fraud. Um, and I mean, yeah, even in South Africa, we've also got a few other insured tech companies popping up that are just trying to do one or two few things differently. But when you look at them, they're backed by the big, bigger companies that are handling a lot of the risk uh, you know, taking such as, you know, Sunlum is doing with uh, Indifin, and I even see the Pineapple we've had on, on the channel. Uh, they've also got like a, an actuarial company behind them that's actually handling more of the risk component. So it's, yeah, it's interesting seeing the, the insurance and uh, entrepreneur space. Because um, I don't know, Kiara, have you, have you ever thought of going full entrepreneur after, after your studies or what are your career things? Are you looking to go more into the office world and the traditional space? But um, currently, because obviously I'm still doing my honours, I haven't really thought about going like con completely entrepreneurial because I do think um, by going corporate initially, there's a lot to learn. And I feel like I currently don't have the expertise that I'd like to have to go and start up my own thing. I think I would like to work underneath someone, sort of see how they do things and then take it from there. Because I, I think there's like a lot that you don't realize that goes behind, especially in insurance. There's a lot like that you don't think about. And I think you need to first gain a bit of insight before you can just go on by yourself. 